G'day guys, Dan from DK Stainless here. Today we're going to go through a little bit about the press brake and folding one of our products, which is one of our stainless steel water tanks. So guys, the machine we use to do all of our pressing for all of our stainless and all of our other uh, different materials and products is this bad boy here. This thing is a 3.2 meter, 125 ton uh, press brake. Now, it's controlled by a Dellum DA50AT controller, uh, which not only controls the Y axis, which is the main beam that goes up and down, but also controls the X axis, which is this uh, backstop here, and also the R axis, which raises up the backstop up and down. So it's a pretty powerful bit of kit, and being able to control the main beam to 0.01 of a millimeter. So it's a very, very precise uh, bit of kit and able to get our folds bang on every time. Guys, one of the great features with this DA50A controller is the ability to use uh, the press in either automatic or manual mode. Automatic mode means that you can actually go through and draw your part up. You can go through, select the tools and actually look at the bend sequence to make sure it's actually gonna bend properly and actually visualize it. So it's a very, very cool feature. Then you can go through and write programs and change literally everything on it. So it's a very, very powerful tool. However, today we're gonna to be using this in manual mode. All right, guys, the dies we're gonna use for this specific product is a, a 30 degree knife blade top punch uh, and a eight millimeter bottom die or eight millimeter V bottom die. What you can see here is this die here has actually got two Vs, an eight mil and a 12. And so it's a double V die block, but we're just gonna use the eights. The beauty of this machine is that we can put in a variety of different uh, top punches and bottom dies to suit different products, different thicknesses, wherever it's uh, one mil all the way up to eight and uh, 10 mil plate. So the process of bending that we're doing today is what's called air bending. There's a number of different types, whether it's air bending, uh, bottoming, uh, coining, uh, three point bending. They're all different types of forming processes, but today we're just going to do air bending. All right guys, I'm just gonna go through and uh, program this controller the manual way. To make it easy, in the future episodes, I will do a complete episode or a tutorial on your bending allowances, your metal thicknesses, and so on and so forth. There is way too much information for me to delve into that right now. It can take a long time to understand and actually work out how to do it proficiently. Um, so basically, just to let you guys know what I'm doing, is I'm telling the machine where I want the backstop, how far in. I'm telling it how long my fold is so I can work out the tonnage. I'm also telling it the angle and the correction. Now, because I, the machine's just turned on, I'm gonna go a little bit under 90 degrees, which is where uh, these next folds need to be. And I'll just slowly work the machine into it. You'll find with a hydraulic uh, brake press, when the hydraulic oil is cold, it'll fold slightly under. When the machine warms up and the hydraulic oil warms up, your corrections can change uh, slightly. So that's just a quick note. Now guys, before I fold, I just have to say it, never put your hands in here between the top punch and the bottom die. It's kind of common sense. If you do and it comes down, you're gonna lose fingers and limbs. Just, just don't do it, it's for folding metal. So now I've just done that first fold. I'm just gonna actually check, check to make sure it's square. And that's actually come up spot on for the first fold. So that's good. The machine's dialed, what I like to see. Let's check it again to make sure it wasn't a fluke, which it wasn't. All right, with this one, You'll notice that if I go to fold up here, this bend or this part here will actually clash with this die. 
So what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to move the backstops all the way over just to make sure I actually clear it. That's a trap for young pliers, that one. Like so, move that back along. And you can see that I've already um, made the length of this top die perfect so it sits inside these two folds so it actually doesn't clash. And that's one part done. This is actually our, one of our internal baffles. All right guys, now I'm gonna go set up our next part. Right, our straps are now complete. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on our body of our tank. Because uh, some of the sides on this tank have a long flat surface, you'll notice if, if you put a little bit of pressure on them, they bow out if it's a completely flat surface. So what we do is we go through and cross break our larger surfaces. It just gives that nice flat surface a bit more strength and it's less prone to bowing um, from pressure as the water expands and contracts. All right, guys, on this one, we're just gonna mark out where our cross brakes are gonna go. It'll just make it a heck of a lot easier for us when it comes to lining this up. Now, before I go too much further, I better double check to make sure I've actually got enough dye in the machine. Awesome. So with this one, because I only want just a small little kick, for this first one, I'm gonna do it very, very slowly. And we're gonna reduce this tonnage all the way down because it will not require many tonnes at all. Literally, I'm dropping down to just two tonnes. It's gonna cycle it. Looks all right. Okay. So move that backstop back a little bit more. All right. Now the purpose of this, as I was saying, is just to merely kick it. Just to give it a tiny amount of strength. Gonna come down real slowly. Something like that. You can probably see that's probably actually gone a fair bit over. So we're just gonna reduce that down even more for the next one. A lot of this will flatten out when it comes to folding the other ends. Uh, it'll actually help reduce that. The light guards are doing their job and saying there's something obstructing its view. So we know they're working. So our camera's going to come down real slow. Line everything up exactly where we want it. Like so. And as you can see guys there, that's the actual cross break that it does. Now once this, um, once the other parts of this tank are actually folded and put together, and once it's welded, you'll see these actually come flattened out and it'll probably be half the height. While we've got this set up, I'm gonna go through and uh, cross break the other parts of the tank.
you'll notice guys that I'm always turning my head and looking at the controller, just double and triple checking to make sure it's all set up correctly. One, might drop that down even more. All right guys, when you're folding these larger parts, sometimes it actually pays to have a second, second person on the press just to line it up and make sure she's absolutely spot on. And that's what I'm gonna do in this instance. So, hey H, ah, good man. Can you come and line this one up for me? You'll notice guys that Hayden and I are in constant communication, just so we both know and we both, I don't hurt him. Yep. You good? Yep. All right, that one's done. We'll jump in. Yep. Like that. Yep. All righty, guys. Now these cross brakes are done. Now we're going to go through and actually fold these, fold these sides up so we can make the outer carcass, and we'll do the same thing for the other side. You good? Again, guys, like always, we're gonna go through and just double check this fold. And she's actually under. She's good down Hayden's side, but she's a tad under on mine. Yep. It's good, and that's good. All right, because uh, this other part here has got the same same fold distance, we're going to fold that and then we're going to fold the larger ones. Not too bad, that one's come out just a tad over, but we'll be able to fix that one. Excellent, now we're gonna go on to this last part. All right, you good? Yep. 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 As you can see guys, that's obviously, it looks like it's underfolded, but bear in mind, that because of the cross breaks, you're gonna be at a couple of degrees on this overall fold anyway. So looking at that, looking how it actually uh, sits, actually looks pretty good. Yep. All right guys, there you have it. That's all the folding done. Now, as you can see, when you put these two parts together, they fit really well and really quite snugly. So once we go through, we'll tack it up, line everything up perfectly. We'll then go through, obviously put the baffles in, uh, put our water inlet and water outlet and breather uh, spigots. Then we'll go through, fully weld it, we'll polish it, and then we'll actually um, hydrostatic test it to make sure there's actually no leaks. This one here is actually going out to a customer. So guys, thanks for checking that out. Uh, check out uh, or look out for next week's uh, episode. Uh, it'll be great. Cheers, guys.